Hello and welcome back. This is David from the Personal Finance Squad. So what we want to do here, we want to talk about the premium and that is the payment term. The total amount of your payment term for the cycle. So it's uh, usually on a six month policy where every six months they go back and reprice what you have because they have to go check certain things based on, on, on state laws from where you live and uh, things like that. And then there's the policy declaration which is an itemized list of the co coverages and the costs that you're paying. Okay, so like we just said here, the premium is a total amount of what is, what is due to the insurance company for a specific period of time. You can pay it for a year if you want, probably with a discount or six months in hold with a discount, but usually you pay on a monthly basis, but the premium is often for six months. Six month premium. But again, you need to check. Some companies might do it every year. So when it comes down to what you're generally going to see on policies, because most people lease them by a car, so most people are going to have these coverages and for their own protection, is comprehensive and collision. So I've thrown some general numbers here. And what you want to have is, is uh, dependent upon yourself. You know, in my area and where I live and my driving history that these deductibles seem to be pretty comfortable for what I like. And what you want to think about is that if a deductible is 250 or 500 and you have a claim, you're going to have to pay these numbers up front. So here's how you have to think about it. If your premium for comprehensive went to 500 and 1,000 for collision, then your rates are going to go down. Rate down. And now they're going to go up if you pay less. So the way you have to think about it is if I get an accident for collision, it's $1,000. Well, that's $1,000 the company doesn't have to pay for. But if you have that total, that means they need to kick out an additional 500 So that's why you're getting the break or that's why you're paying more for it. So here's another piece right here. Sometimes a policyholder can pay less in certain cases if there is a car insurance deductible waiver in states where it's available. Drivers are required to buy collision deductible waiver in conjunction with collision coverage. And that's why above I threw out those two main coverages because that's just very common. But we do see here that some states a deductible waiver may not be required. Required, So we're saying, remember, the word is deductible. You're going to have to pay that money up front. So you need to ask questions, but we're going to stick with collision and comprehensive for the purposes of this exercise. And so now we want to do is find out other ways that we can get the policy reduced, get that cost down for that premium. So reward programs are very common, right? Vanishing deductibles. We talked about this in one of our other sections. I believe it was the first section. But you can see here that I believe at this point in time, Allstate still may have this as a feature as one company that I can think of. So they say, you know what, if I'm accident free for a year, I'm going to reduce your deductible, let's say, by $100. And let's say based on a $500 deductible for, let's say, collision, they're going to give you $100 back if you have accident free. And they'll do it up to, up to $500. So you're good for five years in a row. As long as you're accident free, your deductible, you're not going to have one. Now you're paying for it in terms of the co coverage. But it's just saying, listen, if I happen to get in an accident at some point, so let's say in year year four, I get into an accident. Well, at that point, my deductible is only going to be 200 as opposed to 500 where I started. So you can read those at your leisure, but that's basically what how that works. Okay, accident forgiveness. We talked about this one earlier as well. What they're saying here is you're in an at-fault accident. I've heard, never heard more than one, but basically they say you, your first accident happens, your rate won't go up. They're giving you a pass. And that's good. That's a nice feature. So we talk about a minor violation ticket won't increase rates. So one incident is allowed per driver every three years. So that is not a stone thing. You have to see if this exists for where you live as insurance companies have rates based on states and the state coverage as well. So, But this is more of a policy thing here. So they may have this, they may not. Minor violations could be you're driving down the road and you get a citation. It's not a ticket, but you pay a fine. 
So they say, I was going to rate you up for 10 over. You're going to pay 150 bucks, but no points on my record. No mark. But I'm starting to see more and more that companies are just saying, listen, I see everything that you're involved in. And I mentioned this earlier. And I see you're in a violation and you didn't get a ticket. That's I'm still marking you. It's just like it's a so it's not so much, hey, I get no marks on my record that's can be pulled up on a state computer. It's like, listen, you're in a violation of some sort or another, and I could potentially raise your rates because of that. Safe driving bonus. So let's say every six months, accident free, a policy holder can earn a safe driving bonus. And they may get a percentage of the premium back. So that's kind of a conjunction of lowering the collision deductible if they stay out of it, which is what we were saying up here with vanishing deductible. So here's another one, loyalty rewards. This is automatic coverage where rewards increase over time. The first level is for unlimited small accident forgiveness and the second level is for young driver discount, continuous insurance discount so that you keep coverage consistently for years, you never have a lapse in coverage, as they would say, so they know that you've been paying and you're covered the whole time, and they, that makes you a less of a risk because they know that you're, you've been a consistent payer, so they know you have coverage somewhere. And large accident forgiveness. So again, these are just kind of thrown out here. There's all kinds of discounts. You have to ask your insurer, what are the discounts that you offer? It's always a key question. What discounts do you offer? And they'll sh they should ask you questions about what they are and you can find out if you apply to those. And they don't all, they're not all across the board the same, so you need to figure that out. Okay, other ways to reduce the premium. So we've talked about driving record, and we've talked about credit report. So like we talked a little earlier in that little uh, couple sections ago about the, the cars in the top 10 list that have uh, theft rates or claim rates. So they say, how many claims does this car have? Red Mustangs tend to have more claims, it's just for whatever reason. Maybe they drive faster because they, they love to hit that boss engine down the road. Some cars, based on figures they have, cost less to repair. Some are more safe. Like Volvos have always been historically known for safety, so you may get a, maybe get a break there, but you don't exactly know what that break is. But these are things you have to think about your car. There's a, a kind of a factor that you can control to some degree because these factors, what it costs, how much you're driving it, how, again, how much it gets ripped off or has a claim. These are things you can find out some general information about before you choose to get a new car or lease one before you put in any insurance on it. And you can certainly call for a quote on a car that you'd like to have before you ever buy it and they'll give you that information. And that way you can get an understanding of the, kind of the price range and the coverage that you want. Talked about this a few times already. It's in brief. Insure all cars and other, and all policies, other policies that you can with the same company. So we talked about the multi-car discount with having, once you get the second car, you've hit the multi-car discount. So if you have two cars, you're gonna get it. And then the third or so, you keep them all in the same house under that insurance company. And if you can pair it with a homeowner's policy, possibly renter's insurance, but probably not as likely. The same company, they give you like this dual policy discount. Asking for the discounts. Make sure you run through that list of what that is. They differ from company to company, although some may have the same ones. It used to be, hey, do you wear your seatbelt? And it probably still is because most seatbelts aren't automatic. So if you wear your seatbelt, they may give you a discount for that. Now, if you get a ticket for not wearing your seatbelt, they're probably going to find that out at some point and you're going to pay more on your premium. Colleges, universities, my company, example, the college I went to is not on their list, so I could have gotten a little more discount. Than what for what I'm paying, but I didn't get it. But this is a great thing to ask for. Sometimes it might be where you work. Anti theft system, especially new, almost all new cars have some kind of theft deterrent that will lower your vehicle. It's kind of like having an alarm on your house. If you have an alarm, then your homeowner's insurance will be less. We talked about this a little bit earlier in this section, but the higher that you pay in your deductible that you choose to have will lower your cost. So there's a big difference between a 250 and a $1,000 deductible, say, in collision. And what you need to figure out is 
If I have a 250 deductible as an example over as opposed to a thousand, you can find out in the policy in the declaration what the cost is. So this say for example the cost here is $700 a year and then over here it's 350 so let's say it's half that. You've got to say to yourself over the course of time it's going to take two years at a thousand before I hit this number here. So over the course of two years you look at it and say now I've of two years I paid fourteen hundred here and I've paid seven hundred since it's double and that looks like a that's a lot of money comparatively speaking. So what you have to rethink about to yourself is hopefully if you've had a good history, a good driving record, and that you feel like you're gonna play the odds and say, listen, I'm just gonna say I'm I don't really think I'm gonna get an accident and you can take this risk and keep the number higher at a thousand dollars and keep that premium lower. So I will say though, one thing you can do, just kind of like a supplemental item in your budget that you can do, and you can say that, you know what, I'm going to take that risk, and I'm going to have my deductible at a thousand, and I'm only going to pay three fifty a year. But if I want to try to mitigate some of my risk, in case I do get in an accident, I could say, well, whatever the difference in my premium is. I could put some of that money away. So I could say, you know what? The difference is double. So maybe I'm willing to say, I'm going to split that difference. So as opposed to paying 700, which I could do, but I'm paying 350. If I split that difference of 350, break that down to 175, I'm going to throw 175 in the supplemental. Kind of like an insurance insurance for myself on the price in case I get into the accident. So really in essence if you went six months and didn't pay on a claim then you're in pretty good shape. So let's do a little bit of quick math here and say you know what 175 multiplied by six let's write this over here running out of real estate times six let's do the math equals 1050 so you can see right there that would actually cover the deductible amount if you got in an accident right here so again this is just a loose example you can do it any way you want but that is one way to think about it so that they're by paying more for the deductible if I get an accident maybe I'm willing to put a few bucks aside as an insurance policy for myself to cover because I do really get in that accident and if you don't want to do that you don't it's just something to think about okay Reducing coverage of an old car. So we talked earlier about if your car is worth $2,000, do I really want to be paying for collision, comprehensive, or, you know, again, it depends on where you live, but the whole point is maybe I'm going to consider changing the coverage on my car because the car's not worth so much. Why am I going to pay so much on to keep this car going? So if you have a five-year-old Mercedes versus a seven-year-old Kia, there's a big difference, right? You could have a, a 15 year old car. You're gonna get to a point where you look at the car and say, I, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna put the least amount I need on here. As long as I have coverage, it covers the things that are important, but where I can reduce that coverage and not pay that out every month, I'd rather take that money and put it in my pocket and save for a new car. So for example, you could say, my policy is $1,000 for full coverage, which is just the full boat of everything you may have in a newer car, right? For let's say six months. But if I take off the coverages I don't have to have, but I'm within the, the, the state limits of the other ones, and maybe my coverage is $600 for six months, well, figuratively speaking, if you could afford it, you could save $400 and have that inside account. That'd help you with payment toward a car down the road. That's a certain way to look at it. And it's not uncommon that people do that. Okay, manage teenagers driving. Teenagers. Like we've said before, statistically, they cost more, they get into more accidents or more infractions, and as a result, right off the bat, they cost more just to insure them, just on that paradigm alone. So what you can try to do, depending on the company, is you like your goal is, to, if you have a car for your teenager, you want to make sure that you're the primary driver. 
you make the teenager the primary driver, likelihood is it's going to cost more to insure that car. Not all companies do that. Some companies sign one car per person. So if you have three drivers, two adults and one teenager, and you have three cars, they're going to sign one of those cars to that kid. Now, if you have a fourth kid who's driving and they only have three cars, then they obviously can't be been to a car, so that should be a nice benefit and keep the policy lower. So wherever you can, this is a key piece. Make sure that the parent, the guardian, could be the principal driver of that car. And the discount at the child's grade point is a certain grade. That's a pretty common one. Some places they might have an approved driver course beyond the license that you would receive. It's probably a paid course, but that can reduce money for the premium. Students, the way they think about it is that if the student is away and they're not driving, now obviously the risk is so low because they're not, they're not in a car, but it doesn't mean they might not jump in someone else's car. So it's pretty common here that your student may be 300 miles away at college. However, they still need to have some form of coverage in case they, they're driving. It depends. However, the point is to pay a lot less for that because they're not in the car and they don't have anything been to their name. So this is a pretty important piece right here to think about and ask. Another one on here, which we may see a little later, is that if you, you may have a car that you only drive at certain points of the year or you're just not driving it for a while, or maybe that car your child was driving is sitting in the driveway because they can't drive it as a freshman at a college. So you may want to like, garage that car. And so again, they know that's getting very limited use. And so really saying that really any use at all, they're gonna garage it, they're gonna reduce the premium. So these are all really good ones here to make sure that you ask. Okay. So let's get down to what we always do with the things that we're gonna pay for is we wanna factor out what it's gonna cost. So we're gonna get hypothetical and know we've been talking about general in general for all of us. This does pertain to Jasper's budget. So we're gonna say that Jasper has gotten down to where he wants to choose his company. He chooses the XYZ. He gets a quote of $630 for six months premium. And the way their policy works is they take payments for the first five months, but the sixth one is a bi month. So really you're paying 10 of 12 months. However, we budget for the full year, right? That's the way we do it. So you can see at 630, which is divided by six, it's 105 a month on average. If you did it by five, it would be 126. So it's a $21 difference. So you can see it's the same thing here because you have six month premium. So you have June, January through June and then July through December. So again, you see the $105 maintained. So we see that being June is a skip payment month. The $105 budget will go in the supplemental account to feed the future month shortage. So let's take a look at that. Let's pull this up a little bit. And we perform our exercise as normal. We hit the pen here. So we can see for the first five months, this is an easy one to figure out because the first five months, enough money is not there to cover it. So we need $21 in consecutive months from supplemental. So right off the bat, this is one of those things that we have to do added cash, which so you can see in June is 105. This is just an exercise to determine how much money we need. For example, if the premium wasn't due for six months, let's just say hypothetically, then you could save this 21 in cash. So we need to have money up front to pay for it. And then you can see now that the money is in here at 105, we keep running the exercise. Everything all the time is going to be taken from supplemental, but again, it gets replenished in December. So the whole point being is we have figured out that we need $105 up front, which will re give us this money at the end of the year cycle, considering the premium does not change, right? So we have in table XX below, we now we see the full thing and how it would work in real time. Because we see that we talk about this $21 here, that the payment was $126. Because in reality, it's $126. Keep that in mind. Because this is a skip month and another skip month. So we pay for the first five months. So remember, even though the average is $105, the payment itself when it comes in is $126. So by adding $105 in here that we did in the exercise above, we are covered for the entire year. So... We know there's 105 to start, and we know the first five months, 
we're going to be short $21. And so when you look at the pattern, we know 21, 21, 21, 21. Respectively, the balance keeps going down. We hit zero. We know in June, we don't have a payment. That's the skip month. So we go here, we take that $105 that's considered into the budget, and we stick that right in the supplement, and then we start the cycle again at 105 And then we just get a repeat. Reduces all the way down. We get to zero. And then we have another skip month in December. December says... Here's 105. We end the year at 105. So we have a supplemental balance in there, and then the whole cycle repeats again. So this is a very nice layout here. It's pretty clean. Again, this is factoring in the fact that the policy doesn't change. And lo and behold, guys, we are done with this chapter. Again, thanks for being patient. It's a lot of information to digest. It's a lot of questions to ask your agent. It's a lot of companies to call to get the best rate. I advise you to call more than, I would say up to five places in my opinion. And you need to take a look at this probably on a yearly basis, depending on your time or your comfortability of paying what you are uh, for your premium. But it's change all the time and where you live and the policies and what companies offer. So unfortunately, it's one of the things you really need to keep a good eye on because if you don't watch it, you can certainly pay a lot more out than you probably you'd like to, knowing that there's um, the same coverage for a better price out there. So stay patient, ask questions, read this dialogue again if you need to. You can certainly pull it up in the PDFs or look at these videos, making sure you have the right coverage and making sure that you get all the possible understanding of discounts that companies offer, like forgiveness, and also the discounts are based on who you are, um, teenagers, driving grades, whatever they may be. You need to ask all those questions, but you'll get fluid at it. You'll know what you're saying once you get used to this a little bit, and it won't. It'll be a lot uh, easier to uh, manage as you go forward. So thanks for joining, and we will see you in chapter five where we get into the grocery bill. Thanks for joining.